Hi guys, welcome to the channel Practical Reefer. Uh, my name's Mark. Now today we're going to have a bit of a look at uh, the Jabao sign cross plows. It's the CP25. Um, apologies, it's been the best part of a month. It's, I think it's been 30 days now since I put a video up. Just been very, very busy weekends. I think a couple of weekends ago I was away at a little Scottish island off the west coast called Tyree. Did a, an ultra marathon there and ran 35 miles round uh, this bad boy, Tyree, the Isle of Tyree. I say ran, there was a lot of walking and trudging through flooded bogs and going up hills and my dog's now trying to fight with something down here. Go on, Bella, stop it. Um, so yeah, the cross flow, I was meant to do a, an overview of this, but when I, I was setting up the tank and things, um, just didn't have time, I was busy doing other things with the tank. You'll also see I've got some Zoas in the display, which I had a, a third little 10 gallon tank, um, which as of the moment I've unplugged the, the light and the heater, um, just with the energy costs, and I'm running the XL200, the Nano, and then I had the 10 gallon in the cupboard. The filter still on, the Aptasia, Astarina Stars, um, Bristle Worms, Copepods, Amphipods are all fine. It's warm enough in here, but I just wasn't running running the third tank. Um, I might get some Bergian Nudibranchs and uh, breed some of them, because um, there is, I found two Aptasia in the Nano. Um, so I've actually put a rock in the Nano, which has more Aptasia on it, because you know the battle's over of keeping it 100% clean. Um, so I might put some Bergia in the 10 gallon, pop the heater back on, it doesn't need a light on it um, for breeding those. And uh, then I might try and just totally knock out the couple of Aptasia that's in the Nano, so we'll, we'll look at that maybe later. So the, the Crossflow CP25, it's a great pump, I've had it for 5 months. Um, as we can see, it's up the top here on the right, and if my dog could stop fighting with things in the corner, come here you, behave, come here. Um, so what I done originally with the uh, CP25 is I had it vertically in the back corner um, at the back of the tank here. So you couldn't see it, it was against the black background, there was very little cable, actually there's very little cable in the tank as it is, it's still quite fairly clean, but you can see it, it's up front, it's, it's quite big. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. My issue with it is, is that it's, um, it does say for tanks in size less than 90 cent centimetres. Now I've got a two foot cube, near enough, so approximately 60 by 60 by 60. Um, come on Bella, stop fighting the room. Uh, and when I had it in that back corner, as you've seen in my previous videos, the sand here was, you know, there was a big divot. You could see the glass on the bottom and a lot of the sand here, up the side a little bit and along the front was all gone. And there was a sort of a pile of sand here, it still is slightly. Um, so I thought I'll try and move, my dog's taking fascination with some stuff in the room. Um, so what I thought I'd do, I was like, tell you what, I'll put it up high, a lot of the flow will go across the top of the tank, um, be great surface agitation, um, and then it'll come down and hopefully by the time it's done, you know, 60 centimetres by nearly 60 centimetres, it'll have kind of lost its, uh, you know, the energy to move sand and things like that. Um, not really. <laughs> It's still doing it in this corner, um, and also a little bit further back, where you can just see that there's an Akanic and that in the background. So there's almost like a there's a little rise, and then on either side of where the gyre is, there's a big divot here on the sand. You can kind of see it on the front here in this bit. Um, so yeah, it's just a bit too powerful, and um, depending on where I'm sitting, some of my LPS. I mean, I've got a little torch here, which I'll show you in a minute. It's getting close to stripping flesh off, and this is it on its absolute bare minimum setting. Is it the lowest setting? Um, so it's a great pump. It works really, really well. I've had it in there five months, and I haven't even cleaned it. Although I haven't any, had any large uh, algae issues, and it was kind of up the back corner, so it was maybe away from the light. But it's certainly not clogged up. Um, I mean, the tank's been fairly clean, and it's ran well. I've had a good cycle in terms of getting to maturity because of, uh, with adding the mature live rock. So. There hasn't been a lot of gunk and crap to get in it, but you know, I've been feeding heavily. There's been at least a cubic frozen going in there. There's all the mollies, um, dogs misbehaving. Um, but yeah, it, it's a great, great pump. See, if this was a three foot tank, I think it'd be brilliant. You'd have that extra foot to come across, and then it would come down. Um, certainly, putting them vertically, maybe with a heavier grade of sand, you'd be okay. Um, I did consider that at the front. It worked really well in that back corner, but just that it was the sand that was the issue. Um, excuse me just one second dog was eating things um, so uh, today I'm just gonna I'm just gonna show you the pump in the tank I've had it for five months I haven't had to clean it 
it's worked great. There's the you'll see the buttons in the background there. I'll maybe quickly show you those and uh, once I turn the camera around. It's got feed mode. Goes on for ten minutes. Um, lets the fish feed, and it has been brilliant in terms of there's no detritus in this tank. Um, it all gets swept up, um, and it's going down that overflow, and it's ending up in the sump. Hello. Um, so you know it's great for the amount of flow. Zero. 13 kilos of what thinks it's a tiny puppy. Um, so a fantastic pump. I can't I can't argue with it. Um, it's just a little bit too big. You're not going in there. Let's see that big fat. Let's see that big fat. Um, oh. uh, so yeah, it's a great pump. It's just that little bit too big for my tank. There is a CP15, which probably would have been the sweet spot. Um, move that box for you. Uh, which would have been great. So the plan is, um, I'm actually going to take out the tank today. So this is kind of like just a little overview of what I thought of it. Certainly, if you're looking at CB25 and you've got a two foot cube, and unless it's a heavy grade sand and probably SPS, I'd probably say no. Some of my LPS are looking a bit ropey because of the amount of flow and the sand's getting kicked up as well. Uh, so that's probably not the way to go. What I do have, and I've had for a while, um, excuse this, the camera's about to fall over. Uh, is I had the SLW10 sitting in a box and I was going to put that in um, but my little very cheap wave maker in the Nano has went a bit sideways the, the, the suction pad on it lasted about 18 months and it's now just keeps falling off and either ends up pointing into the sand or pointing um, in a random place or and just causing chaos in the tank and just you know throwing up sand a little bit and just, just creates a, a bald spot at the bottom um, and the cables actually started to go brittle and I can see the inner core so I'm using it for mixing salt now um, so I've got the SLW10 which I've had for ages which was going to be the pump for this and then I changed decided to go for the Jaya um, so I got the SLW10 of Aliexpress probably about a year ago and I've just bought, thank you dog and I've just bought the SLW20 off of um, All Pond Solutions uh, they've got, I think it was 10% off, so it was actually about the same price as trying to get these off a, a super cheap website and there's a couple of days delivery. So we've got the SLW20, which is going to go in the XL200, and I've got the SLW10, which is going to go into the Nano. Um, and so it's got a bit more control there as well. And uh, yeah, so we're going to pop that in. We'll have a look at the, the CP25. It's going to go in a box, so we need to get a clean. Um, maybe one day if I get a bigger tank, then it'll be great for that. Um, not that I need another tank. But, or if I could maybe get sold, or if someone's needing it, then I can I can give it to someone. Um, certainly, it, it's, it works great, um, but I just it's just that bit too big. But we'll have a quick look at it, and we'll see how we go. So, guys, here we are. Um, the tank itself, um, <laughs> lots of hammer and frog spawn frags here. That's the little copper hammer that's doing quite well. Um, I think it's an ultra green. The bicolor from uh, Prestige, and then a sort of teal. This one I knocked out the frag rat yesterday and it landed beautifully. But you can see what I mean. So CP25 on the absolute lowest setting comes across the tank all the way down, blasts a, a bit of a divot out of the sand. We'll come back to the Zoas. And then it's coming all the way back, circulating. So it's doing, you know, around the tank. And you can see that head there on the little hammer that's just been in for the past day. It's just getting pushed that little bit too much. Um, that frog spawn head, I had to actually switch it off overnight. That one was fully, you know, um, extended this morning. The other two aren't so bad, they're a bit shaded. But, you know, stuff's looking good. That frog spawn is coming up great. This one was up, up high and the little head was kind of... It was up on this spot here, you can't see it very well. Uh, can't see it for the light. Uh, it was sitting in this spot here where you can see it's quite light um, and the little head was kind of facing um, into the flow which wasn't great so that little head at the bottom there is not doing so well but everything else is spot on and then I've actually managed to mount um, some of the torches or all of the torches so I've got a green there, I've got a gold streak I've actually got two gold streaks um, and in, another end of gold with more gold in it um, and then a, a, a green Funny looking torch, um, I don't know if it's more a hammer, um, it's somewhere in between. Um, I was told it was torch, but it's not fighting with the other torch next to it, so quite happy. Um, and the plan is to get the frog spawns and the hammers down the, the other side of the scape there. I'll stand back a bit. 
uh, get them down there, which those two are all just kind of jammed in there and they're still in the frag rack. Um, my dog's now trying to steal the SLW-10, that's not for you. Um, and then I've got a couple of bits of SBS that I've had for quite a while actually, but they, were, they weren't doing great in the Nano because of... Um, dog? No. Uh, some nice polyps there. I'm not actually quite sure. I need to get the, the names of these. It's, they were kind of just like a couple of pound frags in an auction. I took a chance on them. So they're doing okay. Um, they've certainly bounced back. They had a bit of a rough bit and they're all looking really good now. Uh, so yeah, far too much flow coming out of this. And you know, things like that's not going to last a couple of weeks. That's going to be an issue um, in, a, in a couple of weeks if I left that like that. The Zoa rack, um, that's come up from the sump. Had a bit of an issue, obviously we're shutting down that little 10 gallon, I'm sitting with uh, more corals than I know what to do with, um, I should have probably put this light on a little bit earlier, um, so all the mushrooms have gone into the sump, um, there's actually some going into the nano and a little mushroom basket as well, so I've got a really nice selection of mushrooms there, don't you know, uh, and they're looking great, so I need to decide what to do, I'll probably need to Maybe sell or give away some of these mushrooms and uh, maybe get the zoas mounted onto a rock. I'll pop the light back off because that's on at night time. Um, a cans are all doing pretty well, they're all bouncing back. Kind of the three smaller ones there, you see, they were all attacked by the possible peppermint strip a while ago. Same on that bigger one there that's floating out. The orange one's just not happy. Um, not quite sure what's going on with that one. But yeah, other than that, uh, looking pretty good. I've moved that orange one just there because. I had it sat over here and it wasn't very happy, so I've tried putting it next to another A can, which is looking happy as. Um, you can see that one there, but again, flow's quite heavy. You know, it's extended, but it, it, it feels like it's been forced. It's been blown just a little bit too hard. Um, and I've also got a really nice dunk in there. So yeah, looking good. Um, what I'll do... You are a riot animal. Absolute riot. Thanks for that. Um, so yeah, the tank's looking pretty good. Obviously, I'll get the wave maker changed. I'm going to put the SLW20 up the back. Um, probably just off to the side there at the back. I've scraped just that little bit there, so there's no way uh, none of the little worms. And uh, we'll pop that in there. And hopefully, it does give a good float at the front. It will circulate around the tank, but just not with the same amount of power um, as this. And uh, we'll see how it goes. But absolutely great pump can't fault it um probably more for a three foot tank or sps with a heavier sand um, and as you can see there i've got you know a divot either side of where the the jar sits i mean the the, the surface agitation is fantastic from him um it's a great pump but not for this tank i'm afraid um we'll come back but hope you enjoyed the video guys it's just a little overview of the tank and this pump and then we'll come back um in the next couple of weeks, I'll fit the SLW10 to the Nano, which is uh, lights are off at the moment, and then the SLW20 is going into the XL200, um, and we'll have to change the control panel over. But all looking good otherwise, and um, we'll get back into it. And uh, winter's coming, so we'll probably have a bit more time to spend with the tank as well and do some more videos. But thanks for watching, guys. Uh, take care, and I'll catch you all next time.